Let's take a trip back to the year 2009. YouTube was beginning to blossom as more and more people began to flood the site with their own content. You have so many Newgrounds animators transitioning onto the platform, the YouTube yeah, Let's Play scene was beginning to rear its ugly head, Minecraft was all the buzz, and countless creative machinima were being made. Hell, this was the exact year I decided to finally create my own YouTube account. <laughs> it's fucking been that long, hasn't it? This is considered by many to be one of the golden years of YouTube, and I'd be a liar if I said otherwise. But more important than any of that, it's the year I discovered Freeman's mind. Now, I don't think I need to go into too much detail about why I love Freeman's Mind. It's one of the funniest and best written machinimas on the site, created by someone who I now very much so look up to, Ross Scott. It takes the brand of comedy seen in a show like Mystery Science Theater and combines it with a genuinely creative and interesting look into one of video games most notable silent protagonists. I could go on for like an entire video about why this show is genius, and I already have. So instead of that, Let's talk about what Freeman's Mind inspired. 2009 was when Freeman's Mind was at its peak in popularity. The series had already accumulated millions of total views and was one of the most popular shows that Machinima was airing at the time. It was frankly an unstoppable powerhouse of a series that had limitless potential. I mean, just think about how many games out there have silent protagonists in a first person setting. Shit, there are too many to count! If this formula could be so successful, then why can't someone else create their own series on a different game? And that's exactly what Ian Riley thought to himself that same year, leading him to the creation of the first Mind series spinoff on April 6, 2009, aptly titled Barney's Mind. It was a massive success, and as time passed, more and more people began putting their own spin on the formula. Some successful, some, you know, not so successful. Some a little too amateurish, and some that are truly fantastic series even today. No matter what though, this subset of machinima does not deserve to be forgotten, but to be remembered as something truly unique and inventive. And that leads us to right here, right now. This is the Mind Community Retrospective. So, my name's Ian Riley. Uh, I made Barney's Mind. Uh, when, what was the years I made that in? From like 2009, 2009 to like 2013, something like that? 14? I am Robin Darnell. Technically, I'm the creator of Shepherd's Mind, although only because Barney, Barney's Mind was already taken. And uh, I'm Sia Skyvola. And I made Shell's Mind, very briefly. It got way more popular than I thought it would. <laughs> <laughs> the beginning of April was home to the creation of Barney's Mind by Ian Riley. It followed the character Barney Calhoun from the Half-Life game Blue Shift. In this game, you are going through the events of the Black Mesa Resonance Cascade, but through the perspective of a security guard. Someone who doesn't have any particular set of skills or even notable qualities, other than of course being a huge fucking dweebus. Oh, yes, Super Barney. Leaps giant alien planets in a single bound. Nord Oprazolam of the dark regions of something or other. What is this, Tatooine? Ian saw this as an opportunity to create a character that was your average Joe. This leads to a lot of scenarios involving Barney just being way over his head and not knowing what to do most of the time. His key goal is survival and just getting the hell out of the facility. But that doesn't mean Barney won't complain while on that path because one of his most defining character traits is the fact that he just loves to complain. Shut up, stupid radio. 
Ian has previously stated that a large inspiration for his portrayal of Barney Calhoun is the character Francis from Left 4 Dead. This causes a scenario where every new room Barney goes into is just something for the character to complain about. Whether it's the absence of handrails or the stupidity of the game's AI being passed off as military intelligence, there's no shortage of riffing because of the game's stranger quirks. The, the biggest problem you find with doing a mind series is that as you're recording the in-game footage, you obviously don't have any dialogue to go along with it, so you don't know how long you have to pause and stare at a wall you're going to make a joke about or how long some particular action has to take. Uh, because you'll often find that as you're recording the dialogue, you didn't give yourself enough time to make the joke before your in-game character moves on. And so uh, you would actually end up having to write down some, some sort of a plan of things you needed to do. And I would often do that just, you know, uh, you know, I'd write insert joke here about, you know, handrails or whatever. However, while the entire series has its highs because of that, there is no doubt that its finale is one of the series' best moments. This is where Ian really shows off his creativity and his capabilities of making an entertaining conclusion. Basically, while trying to escape, Barney gets teleported to all sorts of other games. Uh, who are you? What's going on here? Ah, what now? What, am I on a cliff? Where the hell am I? Before finally being teleported to the outskirts of Black Mesa. Now, while this section is a lot of fun with lots of cute cameos and references, what comes after is truly something. Once outside of Black Mesa, Barney states that they need to flee the country, so he heads to Black Mesa's airport and hijacks a plane. This is where Ian switches the game to Microsoft Flight Simulator of all things, where Barney has to learn how to fly a commercial airliner while also being chased by the Air Force. What was that? Unidentified aircraft departing Black Mesa. You are in violation of restricted military airspace. We are dispatching an aircraft to escort you to Kirtland Air Force Base. You will comply. Screw that. Dig deeper in your pants for a bigger set of balls because there's no way in hell I'm dealing with the military. You want to go? Fine. Door's right there. All right, but you better not get us killed. No promises. This concept is so outlandish and ridiculous that it comes off as stupid campy fun. The idea that a normal security guard ends up outflying the fucking Air Force of all things in a commercial airliner is so out there that it actually comes around to being seriously entertaining and fun. It all comes together to make a satisfying conclusion to an incredibly enjoyable series. I mean, I first watched this back in 2009, and even today, I still remember everything that happens in this finale because of how memorable it is. Even though Barney Calhoun does receive a voice in Half-Life 2, his character to me will always live on as Ian Riley. Shortly after both the creation and success of Barney's Mind was the release of Robin Darnell's Shepherd's Mind. This series takes place in Half-Life Opposing Force, following the struggles of Corporal Adrian Shepard, a soldier caught up in the horrors of Black Mesa. Shepard is written as a mixture of the stereotypical action movie hero, while also having none of the skills or finesse that actually makes those characters cool. Right? Wrong. Instead, most of his one-liners come off as cheesy at best. Now I'm thinking with portals. Adrian tries so hard to look badass that it constantly leads to embarrassing situations for himself. <laughs> this gave the faceless Adrian Shepard some much needed personality and charm. It creates a character where you can simultaneously eye roll at the stupid shit he says, but also sympathize with him as a whole. At, at first, I just want him to be a, like 100% coward. I, I don't know exactly why I started leaning into the the action thing, but I, I can't remember exactly when I, I started doing it, but it was, it was like, you know what, this is... I, I have too many stupid puns that I could be dropping at any given moment, so I, maybe I should focus on that. One of my favorite moments of the entire show is again the final episode. Shepard is almost able to finally escape the depths of Black Mesa before he is stopped by the game's final boss. Instead of instantly attacking the monster and fighting till his last breath, he just gives up. He runs away alone and scared, basically accepting that he is going to die alone in the destruction of Black Mesa. 
Bang around on the walls all you want, pal. I'm not coming out. Fuck it, I'm going back to the wind tunnel to relax. If I'm gonna die in an explosion, I want it to at least be peaceful. However, before he completely makes up his mind, he gets a little motivational speech from his little alien gun friends, Sparky, Gill, and Barney, which is accompanied by their little alien noises and squeaks, and it's just, it's the best. What do you want, Sparky? Yeah, I know there's a big alien. What do you want me to do about it? I can't kill it. It's bigger than that screaming centipede was. Whoa, what laser turrets? I didn't see anything. What the hell are you two talking about? Alright, alright, I'll look. God, you two are pushy. Why can't you guys be more like Barney? And because of that pep talk, we see something switch in Adrian, and he pushes himself to actually fight until the end. That is the type of characterization that you wouldn't expect from a small-time machinima series. But here it is, front and center. Robin also does one thing that I absolutely love, and he adds these tiny scenarios that don't really take place in the actual game, but are added for variety's sake. Now, while Ian did this a lot in Barney's mind, he does not do it nearly as much as Robin does in this series. You have Shepard writing Adrian kicks ass on the ceiling, him getting stuck in the floor while teleporting, accidentally falling into the void in Zen, and even getting high on oxycodone for like three episodes, which by the way is a clever callback to Freeman's mind. Baby pictures? Blue poncho? Where's all my stuff? Where's my stash? Uh, no. But hey, did you know there's a bottle of pills in this thermos? Alprazolam. What the fuck does that mean? Oh wait, the label says it's an antidepressant. Maybe I should hold on to this. I mean, I just wanted to be something that- do some things that weren't just me monologuing while walking. Because that does get old. Uh, the teleporting around is- is just something I found out from the fact that you can- the alt fire on the teleporter gun just teleports you to a random place, and it's a different place in every, like, section that you're in. And also, a little side note, both Ian and Robin have stated that Robin originally wanted to do Barney's Mind, but then found out that Ian already created it, so instead of just doing Barney as well, he settled for opposing force. As funny as that may be to think about, I, I honestly can't even imagine a timeline where Adrian Shepard isn't voiced by Robin Darnell. I guess the series was just that good in my mind. Well after both series were underway, came the short-lived Shell's Mind by Cy Scavola. This series revolves around the main character Shell of the cult classic game Portal. Shell's Mind is one of the more interesting mind series out there, because of how Cy portrays Shell. If you don't already know, Portal is a game that is all about a sentient robot fucking with you, while also keeping you isolated from anyone else or the outside world, while performing a series of logic tests. I mean, Jesus, a situation like that is bound to make literally anyone crazy. And that's exactly how Psy chooses to play Shell. One of the most interesting parts about Shell's mind is how Shell is slowly going insane. I'm glad I'm allowed to be crazy now, because that whole sanity shtick was really beginning to grate on my nerves. As episodes continue on, she begins to call the portal gun Ashpod, based off of the acronym Aperture Science Portal Device. This relationship between a girl and her portal gun leads to some of the best jokes in the entire show, and great character moments. Portalable. Portable? Portal-able? Ashpod, I need an adjective which means able to have a portal placed upon its surface. Stat. <sighs> I need a hug. At least I have you with me, Ashpod. Well, okay, I give you a hug. I really want to, but something tells me that giving you a hug would end in tragedy. Silence, Ashpod. Later on, Shell even begins to have schizophrenic episodes where she talks to the evil voice in her head. First number games and now physics? It's as though the entire world is out to get me right now. Exactly. Eh? Oi, who said that? No one in particular. Okay... Awesome. Now I'm actually hearing voices. Oh, it, that's my favorite kind of character to write. Well, okay, that is my second favorite kind of character to write. First favorite is the character who's, like, depressed over a thing that they can't possibly change, and they're really, really cynical about it. 
But um, it, she's kind of like a combination between, between the two, though. Coming up with jokes that are like it's almost like puns. It, that's that, that's what it feels like. It feels like coming up with great puns. Was, was writing her jokes, and and it wasn't even her like joking. It was just like straight up like I am sick of this situation. What's happening here? I don't know what I'm doing. Ashpod, help me. And and because she has nobody to talk to, there's no interaction between herself and like even Glados is just off there in the distance, being like you know the omnipotent voice speaking from above. Uh, having Ashpod there to be a target for her displeasure. And, like, having, like, a random voice in her head, just, like, judging her every move was, yeah, it's fun. Shell's mind sadly went on for only eight episodes before the creator, Sai, got burnt out, stating that even though she enjoyed her time making the series, the pressure of having a fanbase was just too much. And honestly, you have to be sympathetic for her. Having a fanbase appear overnight can be stressful to literally anyone, especially if you are someone who values your own privacy. I just stopped making it. Like, I, I, I put out the fifth episode part two, and that was right around when I had had, uh, like, I just graduated college, or was just about to graduate college, and it was just all this, like, schoolwork and stuff that was piling up, and I had to, like, deal with, <sighs> like, dealing with, like, trying to figure out what the heck to do with my life, that sort of thing, and then... That was right around also when it started getting more popular than I wanted it to. Like, after you reach a certain level of, of viewers, you start to attract the ones that you don't want there. And I had never... Look, I, I am the sort of person who will live in the forest and not talk to human beings for three years straight. And to have, like, sudden human contacts being thrown at me at, in, in that fashion was just like, hmm, maybe this isn't worth my time anymore. <laughs> Even though the series as a whole was relatively short, it is still one that is so damn memorable because of the truly inspired take on one of video games' most popular silent protagonists, Shell. Wait, is it Chell? Have I been saying it wrong this since if it- if it's fucking Chell, and I've been saying it wrong- Each one of these series were reaching their max popularity shortly after their conceptions. And because of all the innovations each series had, I mean, this was hardly a surprise. And with so many series all doing similar content, collaborations were inevitable. Yeah, and uh, so, and then I think it was either Corky or S Robin who asked, it, it basically, Someone mentioned that we were talking on Skype and... Oh, no, that's what it was. I started with talking with Robin. You were already uh, talking to Robin. Yeah, and about Robin the collab started... stuff. And so Robin was talking to you two, and then I was talking to Robin, and then basically we just all started talking together on Skype. Yeah, and then Jared appeared. Yeah. And then and, and then he joined the group. And then... Or it's Simon, too. And then yeah, Simon, Simon was... I think he... Was he at the, around the same time as Jared? Yeah, around there. And then yeah. we, we just, like, formed this, we, this coalition of weirdos. <laughs> The first documentation available of acknowledgement between any series is with Robin and Ian. In Shepard's Mind Episode 4, Robin directly references Ian by saying, I still don't have a website, but the guy from Barney's Mind seems to like posting my videos on his blog spot here. This grew a nice little friendship that would be a stepping stone to the creation of a tight-knit community of content creators, the Mind Series community. With the collaboration of both Ian and Robin, they began to recruit people into the community. They found the likes of Corky064, the creator of Felix's Mind. This series solely took place in episode one of Half-Life 2, where the character Felix was being mistaken for his brother, Gordon Freeman. Wait, I don't think I've made this clear yet. I don't know who you are, who I am, who he is. Who really cares that we found you? Ugh, it's in one ear and out the other with this girl. Corky would then go on to shout out Sai, as stated at the end of episode one of Shell's Mind. Sai states, Special thanks to Corky64 for noticing me first. Go watch Felix's mind. 
This led to Robin convincing Sai to download Skype and join the crew. So the the kind of the group uh, that we it, it formed very organically, um, and uh, we have Robin to thank for that mostly since he forced me to get Skype. Right, he forced Sai to get uh, Skype, and then they started talking to do their collab bit, and then well, uh, no, 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 it wasn't to do collab. It was just hi. You're another mind person, let's chat. Well, that too. Yeah, Robin liked to chat with uh, you. And then we had uh, Corky involved. Uh, he started hanging out with you guys on Skype. And then... Yeah, he found, he was the first one to comment on any of my videos. Right, yeah, he was the one who found you, yeah. sort of. Shortly after her inclusion were the additions of Simon, the creator of Parker's Mind, a series taking place in Red Faction, and Jared, the creator of Freeman's Ish Mind 2, taking place in Half-Life Episode 2. Creation of this group led to new creative endeavors for everyone. For example, Ian would use his channel as a spot for occasionally hosting the podcast Mind the Gap, a collaboration between himself and other Mind creators. Here they would talk about updates on their own series or just random bullshit, sometimes for 15 minutes and other times up to an hour. They also had another podcast called Meeting of the Minds that would include all available mind creators. Don't say anything to make them mad. I've no pirate candy. things. I know I about Operation just... Blackbriar. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, we're supposed to be doing something, aren't we? <laughs> oh yeah, whoops, my bad. <laughs> and they even had an episode where they brought in Ross Scott, the creator of Freeman's Mind, just to shoot the shit with. Yes, yeah, so we actually have Ross Scott in... in... We, we'd promised that, what, like, we'd ask him, like, two years ago? Something like that. <laughs> well, does anyone ever ask me about this before, like, a week ago? Yeah, we'll send it detail. After two years in development, probably got lost in the morass away. of fan emails. Oh, God. I, I could check. I save pretty much all this. I could do a search. I don't think I ever got an email asking. And because it was such a momentous occasion, they included the creator of Kane's Mind for that episode, which is pretty cool. You know, Kane's mind is still being updated even to this day? Yeah, his last episode wasn't too long ago. Shoutouts to him for doing what he's passionate about after all this time, and keeping the genre alive. This podcast was almost six years ago, and yet he's still doing what he loves. Honestly, it's inspiring in a way. Other than the podcast, there was another collaboration that was not featured on Ian's channel, but Simon's. It's called Out of Our Minds. And can I just say, these puns you guys are putting into the names, they're all fucking A+. Great job on the names here. This series was hosted by both Simon and Jared, where the two would watch poorly produced mind episodes, usually at the expense of the creator. It was mainly played for quick, cheap laughs, but would occasionally have nice criticisms and warnings for people who may decide to create their own series. Idiot. Why is he hitting oh, the door? Baby, what the fuck? Is this what Freeman does? God he hits babies. doors with crowbars. There's motherfucking babies. babies in the motherfucking oh, porch. God, say fuck a couple more that hundred shovel times. Next door. Yeah, I know. Come on. How about another yeah, fuck? Later on in the show's life cycle, they would even have guests from the rest of the community, with the likes of Ian, Sai, Corky, and others appearing for multiple episodes. Now, creating other side projects is nice and all, but these collaborations extended all the way into their actual mind series. Cameos from certain creators would appear all the time. Necessarily a bad thing. Before you try to use another pickup line, I'm happily married. That doesn't have to be a problem. The first ever collaboration, and one of the most notable ones, is the collaboration between Shepard's mind and Barney's mind. In this episode, Shepard is locked inside of Freeman's locker in Black Mesa, when Barney overhears his attempts to get out. Come on, come on, open. Open, goddammit. Is someone in there? <sighs> no. Lots of lockers often sound like an angry guy banging on the inside with a wrench and holding conversations with you. This, of course, leads to banter and bickering between the two, while they both attempt to get Shepard out of the locker. Hey, you know you have to point the loud end of the gun at the glass, right? Do you want to come out here and do this? Yes, but you haven't let me out yet. What's so fun about this collaboration in particular is that this is an individual episode in both Ian and Robin's series. In Shepard's mind, it is from the perspective of Shepard in the locker, and in Barney's mind, it is from his perspective. It is such a neat idea for a collaboration that you just can't help but remember it. And this wasn't the only collaboration between Mind Series creators, oh no. There are so goddamn many. You have Psy in Shepard's mind as the Black Ops agent Lydia, Corky as the character douchebag in Barney's mind, 
You know, douchebag, I liked it better when you didn't talk at all. Hey, would you stop calling me douchebag? My name is Walter. Ian dubbing over Barney's lines and Felix's mind. Hey, Felix, before you go. Yeah. I was getting tired of carrying this around. And many others I'm probably forgetting. These guys absolutely love to add in nods towards the community, and it creates a nice sense of camaraderie. And as a person who was a fan of the community, it was always great to see one of these cameos happen. Ah, but I, I feel like I'm missing one. Some sort of collaboration in the community that really showed the power and influence these guys actually had. Oh yeah, these fuckers were in Freeman's mind! <laughs> Yep, both Robin and Ian got their own feature cameos in Big Boy series Freeman's Mind, and god are they both glorious. Let's go into Robin's cameo. For a quick summary, in opposing force, Shepard busts through the door right as Freeman goes into the portal to Zen. Well, in Shepard's mind... Oh, it is my lucky day. I'm gonna kick this guy's ass so hard. Hey, get back here, you big orange fuck! This was a nice, fun little throwaway line that really didn't seem to amount to much until later on in the meeting of the minds with Ross, Robin asks if he could add in the line as a cute little Easter egg when he gets to that point in Freeman's mind. Yeah, well, actually, yeah. Ross, sure. Ross, I've, I've been I've been meaning to talk to you about that. Uh, there's a point like what, right before Freeman goes into Zan, he jumps through the portal and in opposing force, Adrian Shepard comes through a door just in time to see Freeman jump through the portal. And in my series, I had I had Shepard shout, "Get back here, you big orange fuck!" <laughs> <laughs> and I was thinking, uh, maybe how to connect. Well, you, no, you see, I'll, I'll have to watch that episode and watch the and watch. Like I could really a lot the, of this. I, I haven't played Half Life for the later sections in years. Supposing force even longer. So like I'll, I, I'll have to I, see how it syncs up. But yeah, I. Uh, I could just send you like the voice clip and you, you'd have it like just just faintly in the background. Oh, I'll see. Like, and three years later, we get this. No! Christ! This is so fucked! What? But why back rubs? Uh, he told me to do it, I swear. Uh, it, 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 it's, it's literally like he gave me like he just he's just like say something stupid and, and nonsense. And I'm like, all right. And it's like, yeah, it's just gonna, it's, it's gonna be like heavily filtered. It'll just be like, you know, you, you hear Shepard behind you screaming. That's it. And and uh, and so yeah, he's just, uh, there. Oh man, he gave me like a whole list of, of insane things. It's like rubber jump pants. Uh, where, give me some tacos. Yeah, it was just like like we're we're gonna edit it heavily, so it just sound like 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 you don't have to say anything, but it's like sound like you're you're shouting something incomprehensible at him. Honestly, as an enormous fan of both Shepard's mind and Freeman's mind, this was such a magical moment for me watching years later. But this isn't the only cameo in Freeman's mind. Oh, oh no. no. In the second to last episode, Gordon is about to head into the death metal portal when he suddenly hears voices. And this is one of the voices you hear. Hello! They're waiting for you, Gordon. Right. I wanted a cheeseburger. Uh. Yeah, and I think that's how that got started. And I think Robin or Ross asked me, I think it was Ross who asked me to do uh, a little bit. But uh, I can't remember exactly how that went, but... Um, uh, for for the most part, uh, Ross works with me on, on that little crossover bit. The fact that both of these people were inspired by this one specific series and were able to make something important enough to get cameos in the original show they were based off of? It's incredible. The idea of creating something so influential on its own that even the people you look up to acknowledge your own work? That's something many people only dream of, and these guys accomplished it. That, to me, says so much about the importance of this community and why it shouldn't be forgotten. Just like with any great thing in life, after years of working together and creating their own collaborations and projects, the group began to move on and go their separate ways. Let's see, I'm trying to think of anything we didn't really mention. Um, we kind of covered We kind of covered most of the history, yeah. Uh, I, I think about the only thing is uh, that, you know, Ross Scott is is clearly he's he's kind of not really moved on. He's still doing Freeman's Mind, but he's he's got a lot of other things he's doing too, and it's really awesome to see him. I oh, am yeah. so happy that he's managed to maintain his momentum. Yeah, even with like the apocalypse and Machinima and all that. 
Exactly. Yeah, I, I've been really enjoying a lot of his his work that hasn't been Freeman's mind. Just you know, just just his uh, game done stuff and his, his little uh, podcast fan things, and you know, I, I've donated some money to him every once in a while. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's really good that he's he's still carrying on. But for for most of the mind series people, we've kind of all moved on to our own little thing. After completing Parker's Mine, Simon went on to working on other projects with the community, even starting a pilot for a new series called Watson's Mind, a new take on a Portal Mind series from the perspective of a male. You know, you're starting to sound like me gran, except robotic. And me gran's dead, so she can't exactly speak right now either. Sadly though, this didn't go past the first episode. Simon has now moved on to uploading incredibly infrequently, with his last video being a Star Citizen video, on January 20th, 2018. Jared went on to collaborate with Simon on Out of Our Minds before he decided to try his hand at uploading random variety content to his channel. These would range from a vlog of how it snowed outside his house to a speed run of the Half-Life 2 mod, Nightmare House. And tragically, every episode of Freeman's Ish Mind 2 has been wiped from his channel, seemingly gone forever. From what I've gathered, there are no re-uploads of the series anywhere, and while I speculate the reason for the deletion was because of privacy reasons, the true answer is unknown. Whoa, let's just put a little pause on that motherfucker. Basically, since recording this part a couple months ago, I've gotten new information about both Freeman's Ish Mind and where Jared currently is. Apparently, after he stopped working on his Mind series, Jared got immensely into speedrunning the game Half-Life 2. So much so, in fact, that he has become partnered with the channel Source Runs and uploads other Half-Life 2 speedrun tech videos to his second channel, Jared O'Brien. He also uploads... storm chasing videos? That's fucking rad, <laughs> okay. Fuck yeah. More importantly though, while editing this video, I actually ended up stumbling upon the first episode of Freeman's Ish Mind 2. It was in a playlist on some small Mind Series wiki page or whatever. As you can clearly see, the first episode of the show is unlisted on his channel. Which is great news, since that means the episodes are potentially not lost to time. They're just unlisted somewhere. Now, it's still not known what Jared's plans are for the videos, whether he's going to re-release the videos again or anything, but hey, this is a start. Now, Jared, if you stumble upon this video or something, I'd just like to say that there are a lot of people out there who would still love to watch these older videos. Now, if it's for privacy reasons or whatever, I completely understand and do not feel pressured to do so. However, if it's just because you're embarrassed of your old work or anything, you don't necessarily have to be. I know me personally, I would never unlist my older videos because even though I think they are personally pretty bad, they're important to me and they're also important to obviously a lot of people. But either way, it's completely up to you, Jared, whatever you do with these videos. I just think it would be pretty cool to see them again, maybe. Jared's last video was a Half-Life 2 Twitch highlight on September 25th, 2019. Corky went on to upload random videos of games he was playing at the time. These would be uploaded incredibly infrequently, but were a nice change of pace from other Mind series content. Hell, I've actually used this Need for Speed Most Wanted clip in one of my own videos because, shit, I thought it was funny. However, just like Jared, he too would go on to wipe all episodes of his series from the site. I did a couple years ago find one of his episodes unlisted in a random playlist out there, which leads me to believe that the episodes were unlisted instead of being deleted outright. However, I've sadly since lost that playlist. <sighs> On the bright side though, Ian actually does provide us with an explanation. Uh, the basically I went through and uh, and also uh, you know Corky and a couple other mind series people they, they've uh, they've they've gone farther along in their professional career that they, that they do want to kind of clean up the, not that it's anything we're ashamed of it's just it, it we want to what happens is if you google you know Ian Riley or you google you know any of our names then sometimes a lot of those would come up in in the comments we we're like no no we want to push those down we want to get you know our professional stuff our our you know our, our you know, our primary work into the you know the top of any right and once again after recording those lines months ago i actually found something rather interesting about felix's mind as you've no doubt noticed throughout this entire video i've included random clips that are from the real show but how did I do that? 
Well, while making this video, I did some digging, and I found a channel that had re-uploaded the entirety of the series. Now, while that's super useful for me in this video, I'm sort of hesitant to provide a link to the channel. Apparently, Corky's not fully aware of this re-upload, and I'm really not sure he would approve of it. Now, trust me, I want to be all gung-ho about this and push everyone here to go and watch it for the sake of video preservation. However, I can't really do that in good faith. Corky does have his reasons for hiding these videos, whether I know them or not, and I will respect them. I included short clips here to provide as much context as possible for documentation purposes, but nothing more. What you've seen in this video up to this point is the extent of what you're going to get out of me. Corky's last video is Gameplay of Boneworks on December 14th, 2019. What day is it? Wednesday? Is it... Is it the... Is it the fucking second? Did I miss April? Fuck! Robin would go on to upload extra content of Shepard's Mind for the fans to see. He started out with creating an episode based around the in-game demo, and even made a teaser video for Shepard's Mind 2 that was originally supposed to take place in the fan-made mod Opposing Force 2. However, Opposing Force 2 and, by extension, Shepard's Mind 2 never happened. Uh, I mean, it could be one of any, like, three of them that people are yelling at me to do, and I'm not going to. I'm not going to, because they're bad. Well, I mean, uh, Prospect was one of them. And I've, I saw, and, and I, I was looking at it like, yeah, this, this is kind of cool. And then it's like, here's, now we're going to, uh, I don't know, invert the, the colors and have you have a flashback sequence without any visuals, just, just audio. And, and we're going to have that for a couple minutes. And it's like, all right, but why? And, and you know, as, as, as the mod goes on, it does become kind of, like, it, it goes out of interesting city environments that are more organic, and it's just like, here's some soulless combine hallways to shoot through for an hour. And it's like, great. I love it. Robin would continue to upload random videos to his channel, mainly just fun gameplay videos and the occasional shitpost. However, recently Robin has created a second channel where he also puts occasional gameplay videos. Sai went on to release a two-parter for episode 5 of Shell's Mind. Afterwards, she took a seemingly random hiatus that ended up causing the end of the entire series. Sai's last video was a Skyrim mod showcase on March 30th, 2014. And finally, that leaves us with Ian. Ian would go on to finish Barney's Mind on December 24th, 2009. This led to the creation of other projects, like his second Mind series, Harrison's Mind, taking place in the game Alien vs Predator 2. This was a nice little return to form for Ian after so long of not doing Barney's Mind, however the series was sadly never continued after its fifth episode. There also was Ian's Mind, a fun little April Fool's joke where he would play Counter-Strike and act like he was in a Mind series. And then, nothing. An eventual three years of silence led to Ian promoting a new secondary channel, Opposites Attack, a channel solely dedicated to Let's Plays and other collaborations between the Mind series creators. Yeah, so, so there's actually two reasons Opposite Attack stopped kind of being a thing. Uh, the first was it, the intent of that channel was for it to be a collaborative channel of not just uh, us, but uh, there's going to be Jared and uh, Corky and a couple of, you know, may, maybe Robin. Pretty much anybody involved who wanted to do a Let's Play. Right, either Let's Plays or, or short series or maybe like a, like a just one-off episodes. And that was the kind of goal of that. We'd all kind of planned it out. Uh, we had this big Skype meeting where we kind of planned out what we wanted to do and we wanted to make a collaborative channel because um, everyone was kind of starting to drift away from their various you know YouTube uh, collaborative or creative efforts and none of us really had time for a long series so we figured well it'd be a good way to keep making content but at the same time we could kind of make everyone's channel work together but and also it would mean that like each person's contribution would have to be wouldn't have to be as big because exactly lots of yeah. people would be adding to the channel but that's not how it worked out yeah it basically worked out as as we were the only people making content for it and i think jared made like a, he made like one or two episodes or something a, uh, speed runs it isn't all bad though because during that long three-year hiatus ian was actively spending his time with sai which 
in an amazing turn of events, turned into a relationship. And what's even more amazing, sorry for outing you, Ian and Sai, but that relationship ended up with the two of them getting married and God damn, God damn, if that's not the sweetest thing you've ever heard, then you officially have what the doctors like to call small heart disease. All right, that, that is fucking adorable. Uh, yeah, I see. I still see a lot of comments, and we did read pretty much every comment that people made, uh, and and I still do. If someone if someone makes a comment on a Barney's Mind video, I'll still generally read them. Um, I, I'm usually too busy to respond, but uh, um, that's oh, what I see. Oh, my favorite comments are the ones asking Ian, "Have you seen Shell around?" <laughs> and I'm like, "Oh, <laughs> we were still technically dating during during Opposites Attack." Yeah. Or Attack. Yeah, and then Jared left a comment on your video. I think it was uh, somebody was like, "Oh, what? But whatever happened to Shell's mind, or whatever? Or are those two dating, or whatever?" And then Jared's like, "No, they're married." And I'm like, "Jared!" Well, we did all of Opposites Attack at the old apartment. Yeah. And we moved into this house, and then we got married shortly after. So right. uh, yeah, so it, it might have been that the comment was posted after we got married, but uh, yeah, when we recorded all the Opposites Attack stuff, that was that was prior to uh, to, to us getting married officially. And as you can clearly see, Ian and Sai have been doing great for each other, even after the passing of this once prosperous community. The last Opposites Attack video was a City Skylines video released on January 12th, 2016. After three long years of having a community so tight-knit and so passionate about the content they make, it's hard not to mourn the loss of it. I mean, communities like this don't come too often, and it is incredibly saddening for me to see how much of the content they created be lost to the test of time. However, while some of their creative endeavors are gone, it doesn't cancel out the memories and importance that this community had to so many people. It not only affected the people who watched this group grow, but the people behind the group as well. Even after all these years, they are still just as passionate about what was essentially a fun little side hobby with a group of friends. And now, while I've tried to be as informative as possible with this video, I do have to talk a little bit about my experience with this community. This community helped shape my formative years. I would always be so incredibly excited to see a new upload from any of these guys. I remember the joy I would have when I see a new podcast episode aired, or screaming at my older brother to get in here, a new Shepherd's Mind just released. This shit was important to me, and I think it is fair to say that it's a large factor in sparking my love of just creating content for you all to see. It was inspiring to me, seeing all these people just pour their heart and souls into something that they were truly passionate about just for the fun of it. And without that inspiration, I, I don't know what I would even be doing right now. So to every single person out there who said fuck it and made their own mind series, this video is for you. Not just the people listed here, but everyone who decided to make a mind series. This is your guys' legacy that will live on as something that was truly unique and special. You guys meant a lot to an insane amount of people. And from the bottom of my heart, I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you for taking us all on a journey and showing us what exactly your genius minds could conjure up. That's it. You have series like Barney's Mind, Shell's Mind, Shepherd's Mind, any game that had a silent protagonist you bet would have a mind series on it.